So let's demonstrate how storage variable is being handled in U. Traditionally speaking, in Solidity, we have something like this. We have units 256 and we declare it as X. So we are going to create a setup function just to set the value of X. So it's going to accept the unit 56 and we call it new X. It's going to be an external function. So we are going to set X to be equals to new X. And also, Solidity will give us a getter function from here but for the sake of this tutorial we are going to be creating a function and we call it get x it's going to be an external function a view function just to return x and we are going to be returning x this will work as expected by the time we deploy so when we get x before initialization is going to be zero but by the time we set x to be equal to 10 and we get x is going to be 10 no surprises, right? So how do we make this work in U? The option that we are going to be learning in order to make this work is called sload and sstore. Let's see that in action. So let's create a view function that we can actually use to get x in U. We call it get x in U. So it's going to be an external function. As we said, we want it to be a view function that returns u in 256 and we call it return. Inside assembly block, if we say we should do something like this, this is not going to work. The Solidity compiler is going to yell at us and only local variables are supported to access storage variable. Use the dot slot and dot offset surfaces. So let's quickly look at what dot slot and dot offsets actually means. So if we say we should do dot slot, this is going to compile quite all right. But the Solidity compiler is still going to yell at us and this function can actually be restricted into pure function. The reason is because the slot actually is known as compile time. So what the slot actually does is going to reference the memory location of where X is actually stored. So let's see this in action. But before then, because this is going to be known as compilation time, so let's change this to pure so that the Solidity compiler will not yell at us again. So we remove this and we redeploy. When we get X in U, it's still zero. And when we get X, it's still zero. By the time we now set X to be equals to 10 and we get X in U, it's still going to be zero. Even though X is 10, what this actually means is the slot will actually reference the memory location where X is actually stored. So if we want to get the value that is inside X, where X is actually stored on a slot, what are we going to do? We are going to be using S load. S load is actually an offscode in U that takes in a slot. By the time we do this, it's going to still give us an, an error. This is a pure function and we are trying to read a storage variable. So we can just turn this into view by the time we say we should redeploy. And we get X in U is going to be zero at the moment when X is still zero. By the time we say we want to set X to be equal to 10, when we get X, X is equal to 10. What about getting X in U? It actually returns 10 also. Before we actually discuss how to store variables on EVM, Let's discuss more about slots. Slot on the EVM are actually arranged sequentially. So let's say we want to increase this slot and we call it slot Y. And also let's add one more slot and we call it Z. So we create a function, call it function that we want to get X slot and it's going to be an external function. Remember, because we said that slot is actually known at compilation time, so we are going to be setting this to pure and it's going to return a unit 56 so inside our assembly block right is equals to so we said x dot slot so let's duplicate this function so that we can actually get this slot for y and z so by the time we said we should redeploy let's clear this and we get x slots is going to be slot zero the reason is because this is the first index is going to be slot zero by the time we get slot y is going to be first one which is one which is supposed to be by the time we get slot z is going to be two so what the evm actually does is to arrange slot in a sequential order yeah so now that we've known what the slot actually means let's update all the slot values so what we are going to be doing we are going to be updating this function and we call it get slots so what it's going to be doing is we are going to be accept accepting a slot value so what we are trying to do is we are trying to input a slot and load the value that is inside the slot so let's delete the previous contract and we redeploy by the time we say we want to get the value that is inside slot zero is going to be three because three is actually what we set on the slot zero what if we decide to get what the value that is inside slot one is going to return five because five is what we select to set on the slot one or we say we want to get the value that we set on the slot two is going to be seven just as we have guessed if we say we want to load value from an arbitrary slot what is it going to do it's going to return zero it's not going to revert what EVM will actually do is EVM will go to that storage location and check if there is any value that we store there. And because we did not store any value inside this 
um, slots, so it's going to return zero. So what about storing variables in U? In Solidity, we are going to be have some, having something that looks like this, where we call new x and we set x to be equals to new x. How do we now store variables in U? Let's put it as store U. We are going to set it as new value. The opcode that we are going to be using is called f store. And what f store actually does is f store takes in the um, slot location that you want to store the new value, just like what we have here. We can have x store slot, and also what do we want to store on x? So it's going to be value. So what this is what is actually looks like to store variables in U. So what we are doing is we have new value that we are passing into this place, and we are storing it in a locate in a location of x so we want to update x but for the sake of this tutorial we are going to be writing into an arbitrary slot so we are going to be declaring in 56 and we call it slot so it won't just be x now it's going to be slot never do this in production i'm only doing this for the sake of this tutorial the reason is because this is going to be writing into an arbitrary slot and if you have a slot where the owner of the contract is actually being stored we might actually mistakenly write into their slot and change the value that is inside so this will be a threat to your contract so let's test this with the deploy and if we said we should get the slot value that we have in slot zero it's going to be three just like what we have here and now if you now say we want to write into slot zero what value do we want to write into slot zero let's say we want to write 15 and we now perform the transaction if you get slot zero now it's going to be 15 but if we say we want to update the slot value that we have in slot two to be equals to let's say 55 and we change whatever what do we now have inside slot 2 is going to be updated to 55 s load and s store doesn't have respect for any variable that we declared on our contract so that's the reason why we can decide to set an arbitrary slot that doesn't exist on our variable here and say we want to set it to an arbitrary number so we set slot 1000 into an arbitrary number so we can decide to go and read from that slot and it's going to be what we'll actually set here before we proceed into packing of slot what have we learned so far we've learned s load that gives us the value that we stored in a slot and also we've learned about s store that takes in a slot and accept the value that we want to store inside the slot and also we've learned variable name dot slot that gives us the memory location of where our variable name is actually located on the slot so now talking about packing of slots let's say we have a unit 128 and we call it a we initialize it to one and also we are under unit 128 and we call it b we initialize it to two so by the wisdom of how the evm is actually being built every slot on the evm has a storage of a 32 bytes and if you notice we have a 16 bytes here and another 16 bytes here and because they are sequentially arranged what the EVM is going to do is, the EVM is going to pack these two slots and fit them into its same slots. So let's see that in action. So I created a function that we can actually use to get slot A and B. So what I did is, I actually had coded the slot into it. So we are reading a slot A from here. So let's deploy. So if you say we should get slot A, it's going to be, it's going to return 3, which is what we are actually expecting because the first slot is slot 0 and this one is slot 1 and here we have slot 2. So this is going to be slot 3, quite all right but the thing is b will also be at the same slot as a so let's change that if we say we should get slot b now it's going to return three also you might want to ask how do we now read a slot that contains two different values good question here we already have a mechanism that we are using to get slots so if you input a slot it's going to return the value that is inside just the way we have it. if we say we should input slot zero and we get the value that is inside slot zero it's going to return three quite all right what about slot three that we just read that we are going to be having these two variables inside the same slot if we want to read the value that is inside it returns a very big number for us to actually understand how it's being represented on the memory so let's change this to byte 32 we redeploy if we say we should get slot 3 we are going to be seeing the byte 32 representation so the a that we have here which is one is what we have here and this is the b that we have here so from here down to this place it's 16 bytes how do we now single handedly get the value that we stored here from this slot 3 so quite all right in solidity if we just add the public visibility we'll be able to read what we have there without having to think about how to get the value that is stored in a slot that is compacted for us to be able to update this in you this is where bit shifting and max actually comes in and we are going to be checking that in details in the next video tutorial